Hi, everybody. Beth Combs here with Canyon Community Yoga. Welcome to our Wednesday night class. Um, let's see. I need to blow up my camera a little bit. Let's have a hard time figuring out how to do that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mostly so I can make sure I I can see myself and you guys can see me. So again, uh, it's our Wednesday night class for Canyon Community Yoga. And tonight's class, I am going to focus on a very restorative class. So one thing that I think is still taboo to talk about in a lot of cultures um, and society as a whole is menstruation and monthly bleeding. So I'm going to break the taboo tonight and talk about it a little bit, especially in terms of yoga practice. So the monthly bleed, uh, if you bleed, you know what this is. If you're, if you're with a woman who bleeds, you know what this is. Uh, so most of us shed our uterine lining or our menstrual, menstrual blood um, about every, you know, 24 to 35 days or so. Um, and it's a natural process that's a result of um, an egg that's released and then doesn't get fertilized from pregnancy. And so the body gets rid of the lining and um, it's just a normal biological process that happens every month, but nobody wants to talk about it. It also, I think in our society, we're pushed to, especially as women, we are pushed to try to be equal to guys and work, work, work all the time, work very hard constantly and treat every single day of the month exactly the same. And there's actually a lot of hormone fluctuation that happens for us throughout the month. And uh, Alyssa Vitti refers to what's called the infradian rhythm. So um, men actually work on a 24 hour circadian rhythm clock and they pretty much are built to kind of do similar things day in and day out, at least based on their hormone levels. You go through the follicular phase and then ovulation and then your luteal phase. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about each of the phases um, right now, but basically your energy levels fluctuate, your intuition levels fluctuate. Uh, way. Um, so the menstrual phase is a time for rest and restoration, and it's a time to reflect. I like to journal a lot. I like to think back on the previous month, think about things that I would like to change, things that I would like to celebrate, uh, really balancing those two things out. And um, like I said, in our society, we're kind of forced to push, 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 and keep working. And as I've started to work more with my own cycle and my own biology, it's actually been very empowering for me to work with the cycle that I happen to be in at the time to allow for that rest, that restoration, that relaxation, that time for reflection. Um, some people will even say they like to wait on to make big decisions in their lives until they've actually gone through their bleed because it really just allows them to reflect that much more on the situation at hand. So I am currently on my bleed and so I am not going to do a very um, full movement practice tonight. So a couple things, a few things to consider when you are bleeding. And of course, I also invite people to get to know their own bodies and recognize what their own bodies need or desire during whatever phase um, you happen to be in. But especially with the bleed, um, it's not advised to do inversions. So certainly not handstand or headstand or shoulder stand. But even things like downward facing dog or dolphin pose, anything where your um, your hips are kind of up higher than your heart, uh, you really want to avoid those types of poses. You also want to avoid um, strenuous standing poses. 
So you don't really want to hold, you know, warrior two for long periods of time. And then also twisting, you don't want to twist a whole lot. A little bit is probably fine, but I noticed that if I twist, even just in a cross-legged position, if I twist as much as I would in a different part of the cycle, I can definitely feel it um, and not in a good way, not in a nourishing way. And so I tend to maybe just twist a little bit more or just twist my neck to get that nice like shoulder opener and stretch um, and kind of not twisting so much in the lower abdominal area. So those are just a few things you might want to keep in mind. And so tonight I'm going to share with you a practice that I've been doing the last couple of months and it's really helped me. Um, it's helped with menstrual cramps. It's helped with my flow um, and it just helps me feel really nourished afterwards. So I will warn you, um, this kind of practice does take a lot of support or props, if you will. I have two bolsters, so that's what I'm going to be using tonight. But you could certainly use pillow cushions from your sofa or pillows in general. You could use towels instead of blankets. Um, you could use a belt instead of a strap. So a lot of different options for you. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, our first position, we are going to be um, in bound angle or butterfly pose, but we're going to actually lay back onto our bolster to do that. So I'm going to move my bolster over here and I'm going to try to do this class tonight um, so you guys can see me from the side. I just feel like it's a little easier to make sure you've got your alignment set up correctly when you can see the person from a side versus a head-on position. So I feel like uh, part of it could be my scoliosis, but um, I don't have a lot of mobility in my back and my torso is very short. I like to call it a midget torso actually because um, it is so small. So I tend to need a lot of cushion when I'm going to lay on my back. So you're gonna take your strap and you're gonna to wanna to loop it. So make sure it goes through the buckle end. And then you're gonna take the strap and place it behind you. You wanna sit up against your bolster. So your back is right up against the bolster. And then you're gonna place the soles of your feet together in front of you and place the strap around your feet. And then I have my blocks, but you could use pillows underneath your knees just to help support them a little bit more. I find that when I don't have blocks or pillows under my knees that my hips grip trying to keep everything in place, even with the strap around my feet. So go ahead and tighten your strap. And you don't need to have your feet really close to you. You can leave them further out. Whatever your strap distance will kind of allow uh, you to, to do. So I would just advise you tonight, um, kind of our focus is nourishment. So in each of the poses that we're in, I want you to feel nourished and supported by the mat. And the, let the mat, let the bolsters or the props support you. Allow your body to really sink into each of the poses tonight. Um, and I think that's how you really get a lot of nourishment from a practice that doesn't tend to have a lot of movement in it, but can still be super supportive and helpful and just, um, like I said, nourishing to your body, to your mind, to your spirit. Giving yourself permission. This is your permission slip to take it easy and to support yourself tonight. So uh, hopefully you'll find that in the practice this evening. And I'm gonna start my watch so I don't lose track of the time. Okay, so we've got our feet together, we've got our knees supported. So we're just gonna go ahead and lay back on our bolsters, our blanket, 
you might need to get a thick pillow to support your head, or you might need your blankets to actually go out far enough that it would also support your head. And you can keep your hands kind of on your thighs, or you can place them palms up facing the ceiling. Whatever feels best for you. And allows you to sink into the mat. And we're going to hold each of these poses uh, anywhere from one to three minutes each. So we'll be here for a while. And if you feel like your mind is just racing, um, there's a couple options. You can count your breathing. So your inhale, count, and then exhale uh, and count your exhale. You can also imagine that your breath is actually, one thing I find helpful is pretending I'm like watching my breath actually come through my heart space. So kind of pick a focal point in your body. You could also pick your womb space since we're talking about bleeding tonight. Maybe pick a body part or an area of your body where you feel like you just need some fresh air to kind of clean things out a little bit. And take one more breath here. And then go ahead and place your hands on either side of your hips and help your torso back up. So if you don't happen to have the bolsters um, like I've got here or the blankets, you could still use some pillows under your knees. If you didn't have a strap, you don't you wouldn't need that either. Just put your feet together and then you can sit up nice and tall. And then you can also fold forward and you could give yourself a foot massage, kind of rubbing on the arches there. Or you could place your hands out in front. You can kind of rock from side to side. Maybe lift your hands like a cat pawing at a blanket. Just kind of feel into your body and see what kind of movement or stillness your body's asking for. Maybe it wants you to just hold your toes and fold forward this way. If 
Feel free to close your eyes here. And then slowly bring yourself back up to seated. You can go ahead and move your blocks out of the way. You can loosen up your strap. And set that aside. And then our next pose, um, we're gonna kind of flip over here and we'll move some of the props out of the way. Actually, I might need to move them back this way a little bit. So this next one, um, I just find super nourishing. It just helps me feel so comfy and cozy. So you're gonna kind of make a T with your two props, your two uh, bolsters, and you wanna spread your knees apart and you're gonna kind of scoot closer to the bolster that's crossways on your mat. And this bolster is kind of long, so um, if you have a shorter one, that's okay too. You're basically going to, so I have my big toes touching just like I would in child's pose. So it's kind of a supported child's pose. So you've got your bottom prop or bolster, you've got the other bolster, and you're just going to lay down on the top bolster. You can wrap your hands around it. You can rest your elbows on the bottom bolster, turn your head either to the left or to the right, and you can rest your cheek on the bolster. And we're just gonna rest here and breathe. My preference is to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose, but if you're feeling particularly anxious this evening, you might wanna try inhaling through the nose and then exhaling through the mouth to help engage the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest system. So maybe try each of those breathing types and see which one works best for you. So you can stay in this pose as long as you'd like, but eventually you do want to switch the direction your head is facing. So I'm going to switch over with my ear and my cheek, my right cheek on the bolster. Remember to breathe here.
And if your knees are sore or tender um, from this position, you could also take uh, take your toes apart. Go ahead and place a block underneath your butt. You can actually stack a couple and then lean down. And that should take a lot of the pressure off of your knees. And then we'll go ahead and come back up to seated. I'm gonna move the bolster out of the way. And then we're gonna, so my tailbone likes to stick out. So when I do a lot of uh, forward folds or seated poses, I tend to, um, my back, just my low back kind of rounds. So I like to um, sit up on something. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit up on a small pillow. You could also sit up on a blanket if you wanted to. And then we're gonna do um, single-legged forward fold, but with some support. So we are going to take our left foot and place it on the inside of our right eye and we're going to flex both of our feet if you feel like your knee your left knee is kind of up in the air sometimes i like to put a block or a pillow underneath that just like we did in um, bound angle pose and then you're going to take a bolster and you're going to place it on your leg um, try to avoid the knee area, so either below your knee or above your knee. And I can't quite reach the bolster um, below the knee. Oh, maybe I can. So if you can't, then you just bring the bolster up even closer to you. And you'd place a pillow on top of that. And then you're just going to fold forward here. Let me see if I can get my microphone out of the way a little bit. So again, you've got your feet flexed. You should feel a nice stretch in the um, left back here, forward just a little bit. So the goal here, again, is to nourish your body. So if you feel like you're really straining your hamstrings, you can definitely bend that right knee. Take some of the pressure off the hamstring. You could also just, if you can't quite reach, like you don't have quite enough blankets, uh, you could just, you know, um, prop yourself up just like this. So I think the... Folding forward is soothing and calming to the nervous system. So I think that's why it's recommended for menstruation. But you also, it's even more important to tune into your body, especially during this phase of your cycle. And just do what your body is asking for or craving.
And then go ahead and use your hands to help bring you back up. And then we're gonna go ahead and switch sides. So go ahead and remove your blankets and your pillows. And then we're gonna bring both feet out. Again, I'm gonna stay seated on my, um, my pillow here. Then we're gonna extend the left foot and bring the right sole of the right foot into the left leg. And again, place the block under the knee if you feel like your knee's kind of hovering a little bit. And then we'll just put the bolster on top of the left leg. Again, feel free to bend your knee here if you need to. You can place the bolster above the knee if your torso doesn't want to fold that much or your hamstrings are really tight. I also find my bolster likes to fall down on one side, so sometimes I, I'll put a block underneath it to help keep it a little more stable. And be sure to flex the feet here. And if your torso feels a little cramped, um, you can, again, feel free to move your bolster down below your knee. So again, just avoid pushing on the knee. Um, it's just a really, if you have weight on your knee, you're going to possibly hyperextend your legs, and we don't want that. And inhale, go ahead and bring yourself back up to sit seated and move the bolster out of the way. You're going to straighten your legs and then we're going to basically do the same pose we just did, but we're going to have both legs stretched out front with our um, feet flexed. Again, if you tend to hyperextend, you might want to put a little micro bend in your knees. You could also, another option. Um, you could actually just place, this might be too big, like a small towel or a small pillow under your knees, and that would help to make, to keep them from hyperextending. There you go. So just flex those feet. You're going to place the bolster. This time it shouldn't be quite as wobbly because you're using both legs. And then however many props you need. We're going to sit up nice and tall and then fold forward. Thank you. 
And then we'll inhale. Go ahead and move our props out of the way. <clears throat> and then we're going to do um, a seated wide legged forward fold. Get my notes set up here. So again, it's still a seated pose. So I know for me, it just helps with my back alignment, especially my lower back um, alignment to have something to sit on. So I'm gonna continue to sit on my pillow, but you could sit on a blanket, a folded blanket. And we're gonna spread the feet three to four feet apart. So maybe pretend you're standing up. But since this is um, a restorative, class we don't need to be super wide so you don't really need to like really challenge your um, hip abductors or adductors so you're going to sit up nice and tall you really want to make sure that the sits bones are grounding down into the mat you want to flex both of your feet and then you're going to just press the palms they're kind of right next to your hips on the mat. And that's to help you sit up nice and tall. So if you have really long arms, this probably isn't too challenging for you. And you really want to be pressing up like you're in a push-up position. Um, if your arms are pretty short and you're struggling with this, you could also use some blocks to press yourself up. Um, the blocks are a little high for me, but I probably could. Um, use like a dish towel or something. We're only going to be here for a minute, so about 10 to 15 breaths. Feel free to close your eyes here. So again, you want to be grounding through your sits bones. You want to extend through your spine, almost like you have a string pulling out the crown of your head. Your chin is parallel with the mat. Your feet are flexed and your legs are engaged. And this pose in particular is supposed to help with um, your menstrual flow. So to help regulate it or get it going a little more smoothly. It also helps to open up the groin area and kind of release tension that I know for me tends to build up over the course of my bleed. And then go ahead and release. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bolsters or our sofa cushions or whatever our props are. We're gonna place one on top of our right leg. We're gonna keep our feet extended. Um, they don't have to be flexed here. You can just kind of let them relax a little bit. And then we're just gonna fold forward onto our props. So use as many of them as you need. We're gonna be here for a couple minutes.
And then just use your abdominals and your arms to bring yourself back up. And then we're going to go ahead and switch legs. So move the bolster or the cushion to the left leg. Place however many blankets you need. And then go ahead and lean over to the left. And then use your abs to come back up. And then we're gonna do one more thing with our legs spread. Uh, we're gonna place the bolster in front of us. So the wide bolster uh, might not be quite as comfortable for you. If you have a round one like this, it might work a little bit better just cause it fits here a little bit better. And then um, you can bring the blanket and the other props in as close as possible and then fold forward. So in these positions, I like to kind of focus my exhales into any tight spaces in my body and then invite the breath on the inhale into those same areas. So I usually notice my low back and even my middle back um, kind of opens up a little bit more the longer I stay here. So about 10 more breaths here.
And slowly bring yourself back up. And go ahead and move the props off the mat for now. And then I'm just going to go through um, some low lunge uh, exercises or poses that also can help with cramping. Um, if you've got menstrual cramps, um, it can be caused by a lot of different things, the types of oils that you're eating. It can also be caused by stress. Sometimes caffeine affects uh, you. I think it's really interesting to do your own kind of sleuthing and uh, notice what foods you eat and notice if you have an immediate reaction or not. That's usually a good sign. Um, but even just stress, like a lot of us are ex experiencing right now, uh, can cause menstrual cramps. So um, I'm just going to share a pose with you that you can do on your own that might help with that. So you're going to come into tabletop position. And then you're going to go ahead and bring your right foot in between your hands or as close as you can get it. You want your right knee tracking over your left, or sorry, your right ankle. If you have blocks, you might want to start out with your hands on blocks. Push up from the blocks or the floor. We'll take five breaths here. And if you feel pretty stable, so if you're pressing down with that left shin into the mat, that should help your stability. And then see if you can bring your hands up to your bent knee. Take five breaths here. So you'll notice that my left knee is back behind where my hips are and that my knee, my right knee is staying in line with my right ankle. If you feel pretty stable and you'd want, like to get a little bit more stretching through your torso, you can bring your arms up alongside your ears. Make sure you're sliding the shoulder blades down the back while you reach through your fingertips towards the ceiling. And then the final stretch, you're going to place your right hand on your right hip and then bend your torso and your left hand over to the right. This helps to stretch out the psoas, which is a muscle that's kind of deep in the abdominals that actually wraps underneath your pelvic bowl and onto your low back. And you can exhale, bring the hands down to the blocks or the mat, and then you can move those out of the way. Come back to tabletop, and then we'll switch sides. So left foot in between the hands. Again, use those blocks if you can't quite reach the mat. We got our left knee tracking over our left ankle. Pressing that right shin bone down to the mat. We're going to take five breaths here. And if you feel pretty stable, you can bring your hands up to your left knee. So again, making sure that right knee stays back behind the hip. Left knee is tracking right over that left heel or ankle. And if you feel pretty stable, maybe bring the arms up alongside the ears.
And then we'll place the left hand on the left hip and bend our torsos and our right hand over to the left. And we'll exhale, come back down. So again, we'll come into our butterfly pose one more time. Soles of the feet together. Again, you can have your feet all the way out here if that is what feels more nourishing and comfortable for your body. So you can sit up nice and tall and then exhale and fold forward. Then inhale, bring yourself back up. And then we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up for Shavasana or corpse pose. So I like to place a pillow under my head. I also like to place a bolster under my knees. That takes a lot of the pressure off of my low back. And then... I also like to have a blanket across my pelvic area, just kind of helps me feel grounded. Um, and then I have a towel. My scoliosis uh, kind of makes this side concave. So this helps me to feel connected to the mat. So you probably don't need this, but you might notice areas of your body where you feel similarly. And by all means, you can definitely use a dish towel or a washcloth or something smaller to kind of support you and allow you to feel more connected. So a couple options here. You can place your hands out to the side in a traditional Shavasana pose. Or maybe you'd like to place one hand on your heart space and one hand below your belly button in your pelvic bowl area. Maybe you just wanna place your hands on your belly. That's okay too. So whatever your body is feeling, is asking for, is craving tonight. See if you can follow the wish of your body. And we'll stay here for a few minutes. So I'll lead you through a guided meditation and then give you a couple moments of silence and then I'll let you know when it's time to come out of the pose. So just allow your body to sink into the mat to sink into your props. Feel supported by the earth. 
especially as we celebrate Earth Day today. The Earth has given us so many things and it's supporting us now in our practice, in our bodies, in our houses, wherever we may be. So I'd like you to imagine that you're kind of sinking deeper and deeper into the earth through all the rock layers, all the layers of the earth, all the way down to the molten core of the planet. And you see a lot of lava. Flowing. Exploding. But you're safe. You kind of have a protective shell around you. So you don't feel the heat and you don't get burned from the lava. Just watching it bubble. Just watching baby earth kind of coming into form before it gets blown out of a volcano somewhere. And if you've got your hand on your, below your belly button and your pelvic bowl area, maybe you notice some heat coming from that part of your body. This is another area where creations come from. Our creativity, the things we make, the things that come from us, the life that comes from us. Could be a human baby. It could be a project or many projects that you're working on. Your self-expression. This area of the body maybe feels like it's been neglected for a long time. That you've given up on those things you care about, those dreams that you've had. The things you want to create but don't know how to. So I'd like for you to take a moment and think about those things a little bit. And notice how it makes you feel, thinking about those things. Do you start to judge yourself because you haven't done the things you want to do? Do you notice any roadblocks that have been in your path, either put by you or by others? See if you can identify some of those things that seem to be holding you back. Maybe think about those things in the last month, the times you didn't hold boundaries for yourself, 
or you felt taken advantage of by someone, or you didn't choose the thing you really wanted to do. Maybe you notice anxiety or fear or judgment again coming up. Impatience. Just allow those things, those emotions, those feelings to bubble to the surface. The beauty of our bleed time is it gives us a real and physical opportunity to release the things that no longer serve us. So as you continue to stare at the molten lava in the core of the earth, I want you to take those things and throw them into the lava. Release them from your body, from your mind, and from your spirit. Maybe you feel a sense of peace, sense of gratitude for being able to release these things. And when you're ready, maybe you begin to rise back up from the core of the planet, back through the rock layers, continuing to come up through the rock, through the cold earth. Back into your mat, onto your mat, into your body, into your space that you're practicing this evening. Take a few nice long breaths here. Maybe notice how you feel having released those things that don't serve you anymore. When you're ready, take another nice long deep inhale and exhale and roll over to your right side. And then bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Maybe bring your hands together at heart center. May you honor your body and its many cycles today, the rest of the week, and the rest of the month ahead. The light, the love, and the compassion in me honors the light, the love, and the compassion in you. Thank you so much for practicing with me this evening. I hope you found it nourishing, nourishing to your body, mind, and soul. Namaste. Hey, Beth, can you hear me?
I can't turn it off. 